finally. <laughs> I have been looking forward to this. Settle back <clears throat> now, content, comfortable, well fed, and ready for some fine entertainment. It's showtime. No! 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 <laughs> what a terrible dream. Oh, hello there. Glad you could join me down here at the drive-in. Usually, when I say I'm going to the drive-in, my friends will say something like, gee, are there drive-ins still around? My answer is, inevitably, of course they're still around. What are you, crazy? The first drive-in opened in 1933. Richard M. Hollingshead set up a film projector in the driveway of his New Jersey home and projected a movie onto a screen hung between two trees, put a speaker behind the screen for sound, and voila, the drive-in theater was born. Now, they really caught on in the late 1940s, and Canada got its first drive-in in the 50s. They were popular with young families, teenagers on dates, and were a great way for friends to get together and just hang out. Of course, the good times couldn't last forever, and the drive-in heyday began to wane in the 1970s. There are many reasons for this. Urban sprawl swallowing up nearby properties, the changing makeup of the family unit, the popularity and affordability of cable television, and finally, the proliferation of the VCR. Although many drive-ins have closed, some have remained open through thick and thin. In fact, nearly every province in Canada has a drive-in. Many provinces have several. I'll bet there's probably a drive-in closer to you than you think. So, rather than get into the history of Canadian drive-in movie theaters, we thought we'd explore how our drive-ins are doing today. We've traveled the country to discover why drive-ins still remain popular, who's going, and who are the people that keep those screens lit. We wanted to prove that, yes, indeed, there are drive-ins in Canada. And while their heyday may be over, they still have many days, or rather many nights, ahead. You know, I've always been fascinated by the people who keep our drive-ins open. It's a risky business. You're dealing with competition from indoor cinemas, a short season, unpredictable weather. Let's take a look now at some of those mavericks who keep Canada's drive-ins open every summer. There's Kirk Longmire, who manages the Valley Drive-In Theater in Cambridge, Nova Scotia. Now, Kirk and his colleagues from the nearby Coldbrook and District Lions Club had a great idea. They wanted to take a drive-in theater that had been closed for a few years, reopen it, and run it as a fundraising project. We've got a very small Lions Club, and it was the, uh, uh, the largest risk we've ever taken on as a, as a single project. Most of the Lions projects that we've done before is people know Lions Clubs for selling their raffle tickets and doing things that Lions Clubs do. Uh, you start looking at investing thirty or forty or fifty thousand dollars to reopen a project on a on a chance or on a whim. Uh, yeah, it was it was quite a solid job. It really was for uh, for us that that truly believed it was workable. We are the only one that I know of that actually runs with the purpose of putting money back into the community on a fundraising basis. You know, Lions Club are, are known for their uh, support of the blind projects uh, around the world. In addition to that, locally here, we, we support uh, the local hospital. Uh, we support our local schools. I volunteer um, as the manager of the, of the facility. All the, all the management jobs, if you will, are all volunteers. All the Lions members uh, do all of the behind the scenes stuff um, as, a, as a club project. Then there's Bob Boyle of the Brackley Drive-In in Brackley Beach, Prince Edward Island. Well, my uh, family got involved in uh, the drive-in, I guess it was 1991. My father was driving by on the, the road out front here, it's uh, known as Brackley Point Road, and uh, he noticed the, the drive-in. There, was, there wasn't a lot here. Uh, the grass was probably knee-high, and uh, he, as soon as he saw the place, he saw the potential. He tried to sell it on my mother. She, she, did, she wasn't so confident in the beginning. It was just growing up in weeds, and like a lot of the uh, uh, 
plywood was off the screen, and I mean, it was just a mess. There's a portrait on the screen up here, or just below our screen. It's a picture of a man uh, pushing an elephant over, over the edge. And uh, basically, that was my father uh, getting an elephant to fly. This drive-in is flying. It's uh, doing quite well. It's beyond our wildest dreams of what we ever thought when we started out. Working for my son. <laughs> it's pretty easy, really. <laughs> I don't know who's the boss. Hello? Sadly, shortly after we visited Bob, a hurricane came by and swept the screen away. But drive-in operators are a hardy and determined lot, and the boils rebuilt and are open again. Let's meet a few more operators and see how they got started. Well, I was uh, raised in the business, I guess. My father bought the theater in town at Watrous when I was 12 years old. I was an usher, and then I was a projectionist, and uh, then went off to university. Uh, my father wanted to retire. That's when TV came in. The theater business took a dive, and he, he couldn't sell the business, so he said, well, I'm just going to walk away from it. And I thought it was kind of a shame to do that. So I said, well, I'll come back and run it. So this is what I did. And I was back here a month, and he passed away. We built the drive-in in 1955, and uh, I dug in most of the underground wiring, which was great fun. Good exercise, I guess, for a young kid. But uh, yeah, we opened up here in uh, the end of June 1955, hence the name Jubilee Drive-In, Jubilee Year of the Province. We just about shut it down in 1993. Uh, at the end of July, it, had, it was actually in a money-losing position. So I decided, well, this would be the last year. Then we had a very good August and came out of it. And I said to Bev at the time, well, we'll just run it. As long as we don't lose money, we'll keep on running it. So that's what we've been doing. We bought it in 1959, and it's been going ever since. And um, I don't know, this, it's just a drive, it's a drive like a lot of other drive-ins are. And, uh, the good years, have, I guess, maybe have gone by, but, they, but we have still have some good, good nights, too. I started in this business in 62. A fellow that uh, had run the projectors in town, he asked me if I if was, what might be interested. Well, I'll give it a try. And I've been doing it ever since. For Mrs. Gibson, her business is run by family and friends, and it looks like she's hoping her children will take over one day. I'll keep doing it as long as I can. When I can't anymore, then, I'll, then I will stop. And hopefully my son will, will do the same thing. <laughs> my dad's really thinking about it because he's grown up here, I've grown up here, and we can't really stand the thought of anybody else owning it. <laughs> it's pretty hard because we've been here for so long. I grew up in the theater industry. I started working for a two-screen theater back in 1989, and from there I moved up to a nine, a fourplex, and then from there to a nineplex. And I went out to Toronto, and I opened a theater out there, and just didn't like Toronto, so came back here and just couldn't get the theaters out of my blood. Actually, I was 18 when I first started in the uh, in the film industry. I started uh, at a theater. And uh, I worked my way up to the projection, and because I was really interested in the, how actual film are made. Because um, you know, sometimes when you miss a show, when you're late at a show, you sometimes ask the ushers or some employee, "Could you pause the show for a moment?" Well, I know better now. <laughs> now here's a family that left the bustling metropolis of Winnipeg to run their drive-in. Bustling metropolis, bustling, bust. <laughs> That's what it says here. <laughs> I guess we're just completing our seventh season at the Prairie Dog. Uh, the reason we got involved was uh, I was on uh, the road quite a bit doing a uh, sales job, and after doing that for a few years, the uh, the pleasure and shine of that sort of wore off, and the travel didn't agree with me that much. It was time for a change of life. Some people just don't understand why would you want to move from a city like Winnipeg, where you have a fairly good lifestyle, and, and move up to small town Saskatchewan. It's just hard to understand. And the drive-in came into play as well, because at that time, uh, uh, seven years ago, drive-ins were closing left, right, and center, and people were very skeptical. But it's worked out all right. We met many other operators, and we'll be visiting them soon, but perhaps one of our more poignant moments was speaking with Emerson Desjardins. 
Emerson built the Starlight Drive-In in Grand Bend, Ontario in 1951. He ran it for nearly three decades, then lost interest when his wife passed away. This was his first time back to the property since he sold it. We used to go to Florida every year and our kids thought the drive-in was good. So I'd come home and I'd try to get uh, him permission to build because the airport was out at Centralia and they used to land here at Grand Bend and they thought flying over it would be dangerous so they wouldn't give me a license. As soon as the flying officer heard he moved, I applied right away and it came through and I started building the next day. Brother-in-law had a big grader and he said, uh, if you have a plan, we'll, we'll do the grading. So I had the plan and he started in here with a grader and had them all ramped up. And then the wiring, my father-in-law and I had done it with a walking plow. We bored a walking plow from the neighbor over here to, for these and uh, we plowed them in with the, with, the, with the plow. Well, my wife had passed away and uh, I just kind of lost interest in it. And it, it's, it was here for about two years before I sold it. I kept the grass cut and everything just like it was open. And the gentleman came one day and asked me when I was cutting grass if I'd sell the theater. And I said, yes, I would. I haven't been to a movie since I sold this. We asked Emerson to take a walk around the property, just for old time's sake. That building stood it real well. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of the original stuff is there. Yeah. I, uh, I didn't come out to see it for quite a while after I sold it because there's too many memories in there. But I, I was glad when I got rid of it. Alan Barnes, the man to whom Emerson sold his drive-in, was also on hand to talk about, well, to talk about drive-ins because basically that's what drive-in operators do. This looks we, fabulous. We used to have a ladder up here. Yes, yes, I recall that ladder. But that was no good because no, everybody would that. go up and would come out the next morning half our letters were gone. Yep, yep. So yep. we had to build a ladder and take the ladder out each time. I, I discovered that opening night ten years ago. We dropped by the Stardust Drive-In Theater in Morden, Manitoba. Unfortunately, someone forgot to tell them we were coming, and no one was there to greet us. Not wanting to waste a trip, we photographed the drive-in anyway, and noticed an ominous car graveyard beside the property. When we got home, we phoned the operators to apologize and inquired about the rows of rusting cars. They explained that that's what happens to customers when they're caught sneaking their friends in in the trunk. We're kidding, of course, but if it were true, it would have been a great story.